Okay, so now we're going to add uh, sort of like this ridge type thing also on the lid. Um, I'm also note that I'm also not making this out completely from my head. I did look at a reference image before I started. Um, it's important that when you're modeling to um, always look at reference images, no matter how good you are, because um, your brain will not always have a, a perfect image of what you're trying to make in your head. It's important that if you want to make something uh, you know relatively realistic, that you do look at reference images before you get started. Okay, so I'm going to slide these at about the size that I want my um, dent things to be in the lid. I'd say eh, probably around there anyway. I'm going to hit Control Tab to go into face mode, and the same thing as we did on the bottom. I'm going to select every other uh, face in here, and I'm going to hit Extrude. And you notice it's already constrained to the z-axis, so that's good. Again pull it down very little. I'm going to go ahead and, and click this I button to turn off my subsurface. because it's kind of distracting right now. So now it's too low now. So grab Z, push it up in here, and then make sure this is um, median point, I guess. Hit E, and then pull it down to the depth that you want the uh, channels to be. Okay, now here's where it gets a little tricky. You know, down here we just had a cylinder and we scaled them each individually, but this lid, you know, the shapes are a little bit different. So it's going to be a little harder to get it right. Go ahead and click Individual Origins and hit S and just scale them down under Individual Origins. Now as you notice, um, it scaled it a lot more uh, this way than sideways, vertically than sideways, um, simply because, you know, this is much longer than it's wide. So, I mean, there's not, unless you want to go and fix it individually, there's not really any way to, as far as I know, to um, actually, using this method, get a really nice, even shape that like we did in this bottom part. But, you know, this is good enough, so I'm going to just scale it so it's down in there good ways, just like that. And, okay, now we enable our subsurface modifier again, we notice that, you know, that's not nearly the shape that we want. It's, this weird teardrop shape. <laughs> so again, we have to add loop cuts. So um, go back into vertex mode and hit Control R and then slide this loop cut. Now this is also where it gets a little tricky um, because you know how do you flatten out this loop? Well, um, there's not really a very good way to do it, but here's what you can do: if you simply hit, um, I'll go into Z, go into edit mode, and just scale it down very very small small as you can possibly get like that and then hit control e edge slide and slide it back out again and it sort of helps even it out grab z and kind of move it up a little bit oh, no okay hold on let's see if i use median point i'm gonna undo that i'm gonna try to use a median point instead because it didn't seem to do anything so there we go Scale it down real small, Control E, edge slide. That's a little better. I don't know if that actually does. It appears to uh, sort of fix it, but I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. This is a, yeah, it did. Yeah, it worked. Okay, that's the best way I found to uh, fix that. So basically, just like make it real small, squeeze it down, then slide it back out instead of scaling it. So scale it and then slide it out, and it kind of helps to even out that edge. And so you can do that as many times as you want. If you want to just go ahead and make sure it's on medium point and then just scale it in and then control E and then slide it back out. And then of course you have to um, hit G, Z and adjust the height of it. And there you go. Now of course we need one more loop down here. So again, scale real small. Control E, edge slide. Oops. It's a little too much. <laughs> This is really hard to control sometimes. So if you hold shift, it gives you, uh, when you're dragging, it gives you a little better control. So I'd say probably around right there would be good. Now we go back out, we notice that's more of the shape that we want right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put the lid down onto the trash can so we make sure it's the right size. Um, go into object mode. Go into front view, and actually I'm going to hit uh, smooth real quick, give it smooth shading. And just drag the lid down say yeah, it's already about the right size actually so 
we'll just go ahead and leave it at that for now. All right, so there's our trash can. Now the last thing we're going to add to this thing, of course, is a handle to uh, top it all off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead in front view. Shift A, mesh. I'm going to add, um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and add a cube. I'm going to drag it up. Go into edit mode. Um, just scale it down real small. Leaving S. Object mode, move it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to hit S, Z. To squish it that way, S, S, Y to squish it this way, and I'm going to make it about the width of the handle that I want. So S X until probably like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to do is select this endpoint, hit X, and delete the face. This one X, delete the face, and then what I'm going to do is. Um, Let's see, okay, I got better. Control tab to go into face mode. Select this top face. Select, excuse me, select this bottom face. Hit E. Um, go into individual origins. SY. And let's say about, uh, about right there. Okay. Now E. Um, then SZ. Whoa, that didn't work. Okay, now just go ahead and SZ. Okay. Hold on. Ah, I didn't do it right. Okay. Okay, I had to remember. I did, that was a really stupid mistake. I need to actually simply um, hit Control R and add two loop cuts there. Control R, two loop cuts there. Um, select these loop cuts. And scale them out, Oops, scale them on the y-axis a little bit, so you get that shape. Then hit extrude, cancel it, and then scale Z until we have sort of this shape. And then, we, of course, you know we don't want these end faces here, so just go ahead and select them, hit X, and delete faces. Okay, so now we have sort of this I-beam shape um, that we can now extrude and make into a handle. So I'm gonna go ahead in the front view. Control tab to go back into vertex mode. Hit Z. Okay, I'm gonna hit B and actually before I do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and drag these over to the center. Add a modifier, mirror modifier, and clipping. Enable clipping right here. And make sure it's on the x-axis. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag these in. Select this option so you can see what I'm doing. And now we have mirror modifier, so we can just work on one side of the handle and get the other side. So, that is really weird. I wonder why it's like that. that white face in front. Anyway, um, V to box like this, extrude it out. And I'm going to hit R90 and just drag it down until it's approximately the shape of the handle. And I'm going to hit Control R, make a loop cut in the middle of this, and drag it out. Seems a little small, so I'm going to scale it. Scale, let's see. We don't want to scale it on the y axis, so shift y. And then we can just scale it like this without making it any deeper. Okay. And we're going to scale this, shift y again. And until this approximately looks even all the way down. And our loop cut right here. Uh, rotate it a little bit. Move it up. S, shift Y is a little too big. Same thing here, loop cut. S, Z, zero, flatten it out. Scale, shift Y. And if you notice on a trash can lid, the bottom part of the handle is usually straight or slightly in. So I'm gonna just, actually just move it slightly in. Control R, I'm gonna add one more just for good measure. And that's actually not good now, I don't like that. <laughs> right. And there we go. That's a little bit big, so I'm gonna go ahead and scale it down. Whoop. First of all, I'm gonna apply the mirror modifier to it. There we go. Go into edit mode, I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. Um, and actually, I should have made it part of this lid, but that's easy to fix now. I hit uh, the click the handle, then shift right click the lid, and hit Control J, and it makes them all into one mesh. 
we go into edit mode, and now they're all part one mesh. So move it down until it's about right here, and it looks a little bit too big, so I'm going to scale it down to about there, push it in a little bit. And if you go out, you notice again, eh, it looks kind of sloppy um, because of the subsurf modifier. Smooth, so smooth shading. Okay, so I'm going to simply add the loop cuts that I need. Um, I probably need one pretty much on every corner, so one here, one there, one up here, one here. Now, um, I believe you could just go up into here and let's see where it is. Use this average crease to adjust each edge, but um, I don't know. I just like doing this way because it gives me a little bit more. I don't know. Well, it doesn't really give you more control, but it's a simple way just to edit the geometry instead of fooling around with the properties of it. But you can do it either way you want. You can fool around with the press N to go into your properties, and especially when you have subsurf modifier, you can adjust this um, crease for after you select specific edges. So to get different uh, creasing. Right now I have a really sharp crease, so I believe that would be a low number in the average crease panel. But I'm not sure, I've actually never used it before. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of these. Okay, so I've added um, a crease along every alongside every edge in here, and we go back out, we notice that now we have a really nice, well once we have a flat subsurf, a really nice sharp handle. Okay, so that's all for the trash can. Um, let's see. It does look a little bit squat and short to me, but I think that's all right. Go ahead and select both parts of it and just move it down. I'm gonna zoom in, grab Z until it's just barely touching the ground, so you can kind of see it on the bottom side. All right, I'm gonna hit grab Shift Z, kind of position over here. Get my camera back. Okay, so. Right now, if we go ahead and press F12, all we get is just sort of a trash can in this really crappy lighting. So actually, what I'm going to do now before I go on with the modeling is go ahead and just uh, set up the lighting while I have no textures or anything done. So it gives me a better idea of what my scene is actually supposed to look like. So I'm going to go ahead, um, first of all, Shift A, add an empty, drag it up a little bit. I'm going to select the camera, then shift select the empty. And I'm going to go ahead and press control T and track to constraint. So now if I move the camera, it'll always look at the empty. So grab and I can position the camera a lot easier this way. And move the empty to focus where the camera's pointing at. So the camera's a little bit too far in right now. I'm gonna go ahead and top view and just uh, move it out. Move the trash can a little closer to the wall. And let's see, move this a little bit higher. So we sort of have, and that's a little bit too high. So we sort of have looking, uh, sort of like looking down, I guess. Position or something like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and just delete this. Actually, no, I'm just going to go ahead and select this lamp up here, go into my panel, and turn it into a sun lamp. And I'm going to leave this light color, I should make it a little more yellow. And put the energy down to 0.8. Okay. And everything else for now is pretty good. Make sure you have ray shadow and turn the samples out to, say, about 4. 